Hello, my name is Brian Casey. I'm Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com and we're here at the 2013 edition of the Radiological Society of North America meeting in Chicago. We have with us right now PAX consultant Mike Canavo of Image Management Consultants. He's going to talk to us a little bit about the role of PAX in radiology, how it's changing and where it's going. Uh, Mike, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you going ahead and inviting me. PAX at the show right now, if you look at the show in years past, it's been a lot of modalities and, and other uh, uh, technology. Right now, the show is probably 60 to 70 percent PAX and PAX based. If you look at where radiology has gone, a lot of it is PAX based, and that's what you're looking at here. It's not just the systems, but all the ancillary, the, the, the add on devices, speech recognition, VNAs, things of that sort. So. And so, uh, what kind of technology that you've seen in the last couple of days that you've you found to be really interesting? It's not so much as interesting as as the the amount of uh, technology that's out there to to make the systems more uh, up from a, a workflow standpoint, an operational standpoint, make them more productive. That's really the name of the game now is improving productivity and improving the the way that the systems work. Now, now PAX has evolved over the last few years, and we've gone from a, a situation where people need education about what PAX is to a situation where, you know, pretty much everybody's got PAX now. Um, so what sort of need do you see out there for your services, and, and what, what do PAX sites, what are they looking for right now? Well, you're correct. Probably 90 to 95 percent of the marketplace has PACs, with the exception of a lot of smaller community hospitals that are just coming up to speed. A lot of those have even had teleradiology, and but are now putting their own PACs in. Right now, what we're looking at is operational assessments. Are we doing PACs right? Are we adding the right technologies? Uh, whether it's uh, related to uh, breast imaging, whether it's related to archiving, there's a, a, a ton of of uh, ton of interest in cloud technology and in VNAs because what we want to do is get away from the individual silos of information and go to a central silo that can incorporate all the technologies, all the ologies, the radiology, cardiology, pathology, lab, and even EMR and centralize it in a central uh, repository so that we can go ahead and make uh, disaster recovery a lot easier as well. Now those have been big buzz buzzwords lately, VNA, cloud-based. Are, are people actually using that technology right now? Some people are using the technology. Quite frankly, what I'm seeing here, especially at the show, is that people are are uh, extremely confused. Uh, a, a DICOM Part 10 archive is nothing more than a DICOM Part 10 archive. It's just an archive. A VNA is actually being able to manage the technology to be able to uh, eliminate studies. That's actually the, bi the bigger issue, is eliminate studies when you hit the limit of the, the seven year retention, five, seven, ten year retention period to be able to get rid of those studies and, and free up the space. So those are some of the things. You have to have what's called ILM, which is uh, life cycle management software to be able to manage the data. Okay. Now, where do you see the role, where do you see PACs changing, the position of PACs changing in, <clears throat> in the enterprise as healthcare IT gets more control over um, uh, the IT operations of the department is is PACS just going to be part of healthcare IT in the near future? There's no question that IT is playing a much stronger role in in the decision making relative to, SPA, to PACS, especially when we're looking at cloud-based technologies, VNAs, and the like. The department level, uh, the use of of PACS, uh, specifically workstation related and add-on software, will still be in the domain of radiology. But we have to look at the bigger picture about how PACS integrates into the larger electronic health record, so that when we can look at things like meaningful use, uh, achieving stages one, two, and three of meaningful use, that we can get reimbursement and show return on investment for PACS. Because as you know, PACS doesn't traditionally show a return on investment like most modalities will. So we have to get more creative. Now there was a study that came out um, in one of the journals a, couple, a month or two ago about uh, radiologist satisfaction with their PAC software. And the, the study found that a lot of radiologists really weren't that happy with the software they were using. Is there more that the PAC vendors can be doing to make the software user friendly and to kind of appeal to users? Well, the, the, the problem that you run into uh, specifically with, with operators of, of the PAC software is you go through an initial training period and you never follow up. You set your hanging protocols and you never advance. You have add-on software, you, get, you learn enough but not everything. What we need to do is the vendors need to go ahead and do more follow-up to make sure that the end users understand 
the full capacity of the software, how it can make it full productive, or more, them more productive. That, again, it comes back to the thing, a return on investment, how are we going to get our, our return on investment, and the return on investment is making the physicians more productive. All right, very good. Well, Michael, thanks for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank All you right. for having me. All right, signing off for AmpMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.